Rebecca Harney. How's it going? I'm doing pretty good. Hey, I was going to ask you, do you remember when my mom sent me this article on beat baseball and I sent it to you and said, we should totally talk about this? Yeah. And we did a high five about it not too long ago. That's right. So yeah. what is beat baseball? Well, beat baseball is basically baseball for the vision impaired. Okay. And you know me, of course, I had to dig a little deeper. Yeah. And I found one of the top players who lives near us in Austin. You are so good at finding players. I mean, you're amazing at this. So today we have on our podcast, Brandon Chester, and he is a incredible beat baseball player. He's going to tell us all about it. Please enjoy this interview. Well, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us today. You said you're in a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, we're we're doing a Texas style. We're down here at Baby Acapulco's. Uh -huh. um, about to go walk the, the trail of lights here in Austin. Oh, oh that's so awesome. So fun. So fun. Very yeah, cool. That's awesome. Well, we won't keep you too terribly long, but we do thank you for joining us today. Yeah, it's not as spectacular as y'all's uh, little uh, uh, extravaganza. Where were y'all hit? What? Italy, Spain, Europe? Oh, yeah. We were <laughs> everywhere. It was crazy. It was awesome, but it was also crazy. Yes. We, yeah. our son said we raced across Europe like we were fugitives. Uh, <laughs> we were just like 90 to nothing. It was but it was awesome yeah so brandon so you can with questions if you're ready like tell us about your childhood were you always a baseball fan so my childhood i uh you know i grew up playing soccer and uh little league baseball um you know i'm actually not that far from you guys i grew up on the the texas red river uh in a small town called denison oh yeah, oh, yeah. um so yeah i was a big baseball fan um you know i grew up watching nolan ryan pudge rodriguez i even watched uh kirby puckett run up the outfield wall to snag a pop fly during the world series that the, the minnesota twins won yeah um yeah so you know I, I was always a big baseball fan and you know even when i play the sport today I wear the the relaxed fit baseball pants. I tuck my pants into my socks and kind of let them uh, bloom <laughs> out like the 1930s. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. My husband loves Kirby, Kirby Puckett. Oh, yeah. I loved him. You're speaking his yeah, language. Yeah, he was awesome. You're speaking his language. For sure. I, I, didn't, I didn't know Big May could run up a wall like that. That was awesome. That was <laughs> back in 94, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used to love to watch him play. That was, he was great. <laughs> That's great. So is like who were some of your other favorites as baseball players? Uh oh man, I got I got a bunch. I know uh like I said, Nolan Ryan, uh, yeah. uh Pudge Rodriguez, you know, I, I played uh catcher in Little League. Okay. Um so I kind of idolized Pudge Rodriguez Pudge Rodriguez a lot. And then um Josh Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh and then to go back even further, I like the uh, Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle, Lou Guerra. Yeah. Um, and now I'm I'm drawing blank on some names. Daryl Strawberry. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Rebecca, who's your favorite? Who's my favorite all-time okay. player? Cal Ripken Jr. Yeah. I, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> and Scott, yours? I'm Andre Dawson. Yes. Especially with Andre Dawson. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay so how did you get how did you find out about beat, beat baseball and how did you get into it well um <clears throat> funny story my way of finding out beat baseball was actually a first date with my now wife okay um our, our first date uh i was invited to a spaghetti dinner with the national federation for the blind and I stood her up and, you know, I apologized to her and asked her how to make it up to her. And she's like, well, if you really want to make it up to me, you can show up at a beatball practice with the Austin Blackhawks. You can meet me there. And I was like, yeah, sure. Okay. So I showed up in a t-shirt and pair of shorts and, um, 
yeah, she created a monster. She she didn't realize how passionate I was. And once I, I learned that I could get back into athletics, it was over. Wow. That's so cool. Well, I'm glad you stood her up then. I mean, yeah, this worked right? out perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I think even now um, she, she wishes I would have uh, made the spaghetti dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of taken over from there. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. How long, you, how long have you been married, Brandon? Uh, we've been physically married for 13 years. Okay. Um, and we've been together for, let me do the math on this one, 16 years. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So for people that don't know what beat baseball is, tell us about the game and the rules. So beat baseball is a uh, version of baseball for the blind and visually impaired. It's been adapted. Um, we do play on a baseball diamond, but there is no dirt. It's all grass. So it's pretty much a, a soccer field that we play our games on. Um, this minimizes the amount of injuries from the transfer of dirt to grass. Mm. Okay. Um we utilize a first and third base. There is no second. So, you know, again, we want to minimize the amount of injuries. Um, and our bases are set at 100 feet. And it's uh, kind of like a tackling dummy, uh, a styrofoam pylon that has a, a buzzer inside. And there's a person behind home plate with a toggle switch. And they will select which base the batter is going to run to. So the batter has no idea which base is going to go off. No. I wonder if um, you guys decided which base to go to because I've watched some videos on it and I was like, how do they know which one they're supposed to go to? Yeah, okay. it's, at, it's at random. So okay. um, it, it's kind of like coach pitch softball in a sense that the pitcher, catcher, and batter are all on the same team. So the pitcher is intentionally trying to put the ball on bat so they can put it in play. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you run off of a cadence. A lot of pitchers are, you know, set, ready, ball, and then whack. Um, so it's a timing. It's a rhythm. Um, so you as a batter, you, you've you got to get that rhythm down, and you want to keep your, your same swing, same height to make the pitcher's job ha half as difficult. And then you're not listening to the sound of the beep off the ball. You're, you're just listening to the, the cadence from your pitcher. And then once you swing and you feel that contact, your ears are focused on the base, which base is going off. Cause you want to make sure that you turn face that base and take that, that correct step and just fly out of the box at a hundred feet. Wow. Um, so if you reach the base prior to the defense, picking up the ball, you score a run. So every at bat is either a run or an out. And we have three outs for, for uh, each side. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, you've got six defenders and two spotters. The field is kind of cut into a, a pie shape, pie pieces yeah. um, for the zones. So the spotter will yell the, the zone in which the ball is heading into. So the, the defenders have an opportunity to, you know, do lateral movements, uh, stay in their angles, stay in their depths and uh, make a play on the ball. Our home run line is set at 170 feet. So if the ball passes that uh, line through the air, it's an automatic two runs. Oh, if huh. yeah, if at any time a fielder catches the ball off off the fly, it's an automatic three outs or side retired if there's already one out or two outs in. Okay. Um, if a fielder catches the ball off of a one hop, it's a double play, automatic two outs. Or if there's already two outs in, it'll retire the side. Okay. Okay. So when the, when the, you don't hear the, which base you're supposed to run to until like you make contact. Correct. Some, okay. it, it might come on like a, a split second prior to contact. So um, if you make contact and you turn and you pause and you're looking for a base and there's no sound, the batter yells late base and it's pretty much an automatic do over. But you still want to run down the baseline because if you reach the base before the defense can pick up the ball, you'll still score the run. Okay. But you just can't get put out on a late, uh, late base. Okay. And so, and then also, if you're a fielder, then the ball is beeping all, throughout the entire duration of the play. Correct. Unless, uh, which, you know, it does happen quite often. Um, 
batter has uh, so much power that he breaks the ball on contact and then it's a dead ball. Um, at which time the fielders can yell dead ball, which alerts the umpire that the fielders have recognized it's a dead ball. Um, you can still make a play on the dead ball. And if you get it up off the ground and away from your body before they hit that base, then it's still recorded as an out. Okay. Um, now, if they reach the base prior to the defense picking the ball up or the defense just stays still and lets the ball roll, um, and the umpire comes out and stands over the ball and says, yeah, it's a dead ball, then the batter's got to come back and do that pitch over again. It's, a, it's pretty much a no pitch. So how many balls have you broken, Brandon? <laughs> in, my, in my career? Your career. <laughs> uh, I've lost count. <laughs> um, I, I do know last year at the World Series, I think I hit my record. We were playing against – I was with playing for the – the, the Bayou City Heat out of Houston, and we were playing against the Archers, I believe, and I had uh, eight, eight dead balls and four fouls wow. before I finally made contact, put the ball in play, and I still scored the run. So it was a long at bat. <laughs> Wow, that sounds exhausting too. Yeah. About the like the you league, how's the league set up? And you like how many teams? How how do the uh, league? So there are registered uh, twenty four teams in the National Beat Baseball Association, the NBBA. Okay. Um, but last year, you know, due to finances and fundraising and everything and volunteers, it, it's hard to keep teams going. Or it's hard to get teams to the World Series or different tournaments. So there were, I believe, 18 teams at the World Series in uh, Oklahoma. Oh, is that where it was? Yeah, we were. Yeah, we were in Norman, Oklahoma for the World Series. Yeah. At where in Norman? Like at a specific field? Uh, it, I don't even remember the soccer complex that we were at. But yeah, we, we had like uh, 10, 10 soccer fields that we had set up um, to run games on. Uh, it was a pretty unique complex because it had different elevations. So um, one, one level was like uh, four different fields. And then you go down a ramp or you could go down some stairs to the middle level. And there was like uh, another uh, four or five fields. And then you continue on down the sidewalk and it went down to a lower level where there were more fields. And it was just a unique year because defensively, the sound from the different depths, levels, it, it was throwing the, the sound of the ball off. It was crazy. Oh, wow. And don't, don't all of the players wear masks just in, based on your level of being at what you can see and what you can't see? Everybody's wearing a mask. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Uh, all the defenders and batter are blindfolded to even the playing field um, because, you know, you have different levels of uh, visual acuity. So we just yeah. want to make everybody total. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So you can play. Are you in your 16th year? Is that right? Um. Something like that. I think I think I just competed in my seventeenth World Series. Oh wow, wow. That's, crazy. that's crazy. So yeah, in all those years. Is there a moment or two that stands out at the top of your mind of like this was the best moment of my playing career? Two thousand fourteen. Uh, that's that one's going to jump out of me real real quick. That year mm -hmm. was just awesome. Um, <clears throat> that was my first year to win a uh, a World Series championship. Um, I know that was the Austin Blackhawks eighth world title. So, um, just that, that feeling of accomplishment, um, with my teammates and, you know, it was just incredible. Yeah. I that, bet. How many people are on the team? Um, I got a roster. It, it varies. Um, I, I mean, in 2014, 2015, the Blackhawks were carrying probably like 30 on their roster. Oh, wow. So it's That's pretty fun. deep. Yeah. Um, you know, and then like last year I was with the, the Bayou City Heat and there was like, um, I think 15 of us on the roster. Um, I've seen teams show up with just eight or nine 
people, just enough to fill the team. But if, if they had an injury, one of the volunteers had to go under blindfold just so they could keep playing. That's cool. <laughs> That's funny. So how do you get switched around from teams? Like, do they just be like, we want to pick up Brandon? How, you know, do you have an agent? Like, <laughs> no, um, I, I actually left the Blackhawks. I, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to try something new. I try, I, I wanted to challenge myself. Um, you know, it seemed like ever since I stepped on the field with the Austin Blackhawks, I was a starter for my rookie year in 07 all the way up until I left them in, in 2022. Um, so I was like, am I really this good? So I wanted to challenge myself uh, and, uh, I joined up with the, the Bayou city heat and I was a starter there. They moved me all over the field. Um, you know, I hit from both sides of the plate and I'm like, you know, this is, this is awesome. You know, I'm challenging myself. I'm, I'm trying to learn a new defense, new spotters and, and I'm staying with it. You know, I think I made like, uh, nine put outs or so from five different positions on the field. Wow. Um, and then after that, I, uh, you know, I made the all-star team for my first time. Uh, we, we did a, uh, all-star showcase in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, you know, the first weekend, uh, weekend in December. And, uh, shortly before that, I was contacted by, uh, another team from the, the league called the Indie Edge, who are the defending champions. And they said, we, we really want to bring you on our team. Um, you know, let's, what's it going to take to get you on this team? Are you looking for another team? You know? Yeah. So, so now come, uh, 2024 in, uh, St. Louis, I'll be playing for the defending champions, the Indy edge. Okay. Oh, wow. Cool. Very cool. So they did kind of court you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it, it took several, several phone calls. <laughs> several awesome. weeks to to persuade me yeah that's cool so what so you recently inducted to the hall of fame Sorry. like what's it like to be the first blind person to be inducted to the hall of fame yeah so um backstory on that 2014 um i was followed around uh prior to the the world series by the cbs sunday morning news crew um, they came out to Austin, hung out with us for a few days, did some videoing of practices and they showed up at the world series, um, did some videoing of there. And I was fortunate enough to make the final out of that clinching our championship title in 2014. And then the curator for the, um, the, the Cooperstown, uh, the, uh, hall of fame museum. He approached me and said, hey, we would like to put this ball in our museum. And I was like, sure, haha, that's a funny joke. And he's like, no, I'm serious. Can I get you to autograph this ball? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to autograph this ball because if it's in Cooperstown and I ever find my way up there, I would love to see it. So then shortly after that, I get a, an invitation to come down and – um with this invitation, they, they inquire for my Jersey and some artifacts to go along with the, the beat baseball. And then whenever I get there, it's like a whole induction ceremony and, you know, real feeling my Jersey and, and display case and everything. Yeah. And I was just like, I was numb. I mean, I was so excited that I was numb and that was probably the, one of the greatest feelings and all that took place in 2015. Okay. When the World Series was in Rochester, New York, um, and the Blackhawks beat the Taiwan home run uh, for the first time at the, the World Series wow. to win. Um, and, you know, that that was a unique feeling because uh, one of our kids, Brian, who started pitching at the age of 12 for beat baseball, um, now he's, you know, 17, well, he's about to turn 18 next month and, and graduate and go off to college uh, but he myself and my mom my mom drove us from rochester to cooperstown to do the induction and it was just it, it i was like pinch me this is this is a dream i'm gonna wake up any minute yeah. you know because i'm like i'm standing behind a podium that 
you know, like others, uh, you yeah. know, so many greats stood behind and I'm like, golly, this is awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> That's absolutely. So Rebecca, amazing. this is our second baseball hall of famer. We talked to Eric Nadell last year. So you're our second hall of famer. Oh yeah. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And we still haven't been to Cooperstown. I know we need to make it. We got to get there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, awesome. it is, it is a big and amazing place. Um, as an yeah. inductee, they take you into this little room um, that only the inductees get to go into. And we got to uh, hold and try on different artifacts uh, throughout the baseball history. Um, you know, it was unique. It was holding one of the mitts from the earlier years, was, when we put the baseball mitt on, it was like putting on a um, an oven mitt. There was no padding to it. There was no nothing to it. It was just leather yeah. and basically shaped like an oven mitt. Oh, um, some of the jerseys were like burlap sacks sewn into jerseys with buttons and oh, wow. had tar uh, painted on the back for their numbers. Oh, you know, wow. that was their, their baseball jerseys. I was like, oh, that's going to be hot and itchy. Oh, yeah, for sure. That sounds terrible. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, we got to get there. Yeah. So... You've had opportunity. Tell us about your opportunities. I know you've done some international stuff. Tell us how you've been able to be an ambassador for the game internationally. Yeah. So in uh, 2014, uh, the the Austin Blackhawks were invited to the Dominican Republic uh, <laughs> to come down there and teach them how to play. Um, I was fortunate enough to to go with them, and we did a lot of. Uh, um newspaper interviews um we were on a tv show over there in the dominican and then uh, we met up with the dominican team went through a little practice and how to you know we got a little hands-on with them and, and gave them some some tips tips of the trade so to speak um and then a couple of days later we uh we did a, a two-inning demonstration in one of the major league baseball fields there in the dominican and that was another surreal feeling. I mean, we were in front of four or 5,000 screaming Dominican baseball fans. <laughs> um, they're pretty passionate. And, oh, they're very passionate. You know, I was, I was high on that crowd love. I would walk up the top of the steps, just like all the pros. I took my hat off, turned around and waved at the crowd and they just stood up and just started going nuts. And I'm like, wow. Oh, I'm loving this. Um, but the, the game kicked off. Um, I was, uh, we were on defense. We let the home team bat first. So, uh, as soon as they made contact with the ball, you, you couldn't move, you couldn't hear the ball. So you didn't want to oh, move. Wow. I mean, and, uh, Molly so Fleming. Yeah, it was so loud. Molly Fleming, our spotter, she's yelling at me and I'm, I'm like, I can't hear you for talking to me. You're going to have to physically <laughs> grab me and move me because oh, I can't hear wow. you. Wow. And so they were, uh, they were, in Spanish, they were singing to the crowd, uh, hush, hush, shh, don't make a sound, hush, hush, shh, yeah. shh, don't make a sound, you know, <laughs> and then finally, finally, they were able to corral all those fans. So when they made contact, we could hear the ball and they could wow. see how we moved and how we played. And then after we made the play, it just went deaf again. Wait, yeah. <laughs> wow, that is so crazy. Yeah. That, that was incredible. You know, so that was in 2014. And, um, you know, when we were leaving, um, oh, I'm, I'm going to butcher the lady's name. Uh, her last name is, is Hungry. Hungria? Francine. Uh -huh. um, she's the one that set the whole thing up and invited us down. And she hugged us all. And she's like, you guys are going to go back and you're going to win the World Series. I can just oh, feel wow. it. And so we came back home in 2014 and yeah. went undefeated and, and won the whole thing unchallenged. Um, wow. And then uh, in 2019, Mariano Reynoso, who is originally from Argentina, set up this whole trip uh, and, and took a select few of players and uh, volunteers over to his home country in Argentina and um, we were educating them on the sport. We were there during a, a goalball nationals tournament. Um, so we got some of the goalball players out there on the field. And we were throwing the beat ball at them and letting them hit and run to the base. And they were getting a kick out of it. But um, 
we toured a lot of different colleges while we were there. Uh, while we were there, they were all studying about adaptive sports. So Mariano had set it up to where we could do live demonstrations about beat baseball while they were studying adaptive sports. And so we got to throw the ball at these sighted uh, college students under blindfold and let them hit and let them run. And they just, they loved it. They kept asking us questions about the game huh. and how we do it. That's so cool. We, my husband, uh, Scott here, he uh, and our youngest son, when he was like 11, they went to Africa and were teaching American baseball to some kids there who really only knew soccer yeah. you know, as a sport. Oh, yeah. They didn't yeah, know football. that they couldn't like, yeah, they couldn't drop kick the baseball in from. Well, yeah, we would throw it to them and then they would drop it and kick it back to us. Yeah, it was kind of funny. We had yeah, yeah, so funny. you you have a son. What do you hope that Colton you learns know, from you? You have a lot of. Food. Um, you know, Colton plays baseball right now. He's learning a lot from me. Um, uh, you know, I just want him to be open minded, um, yeah. believe in himself. And never give up on himself and just, to, yeah. you know, do what I've done yeah. and do what mom continues to do. And that's fight through every day, proving to people okay. that just because we have a, a vision disability doesn't mean that we can't still do the same thing as you do. Um, you know, I've, I've grown up my entire life proving people wrong just because they told me I couldn't do it because I was blind. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been an athlete since the age of three. I've played everything from um, uh, soccer uh, baseball, um, did a little bit of motocross, did uh, bull riding. I actually turned professional at the age of 17. <laughs> um, you know, I've been skydiving. Yeah. So, you know, and now I'm a, a world champion uh, beat, ba beat baseball player. So, wow, that's incredible. You know, I've been awesome. married. Do what? No, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, and, you know, married, I hold down a, a full-time job contracted under the, the military, working for the Austin Lighthouse, um, and we've got seven kids in total, so, yeah. Seven kids? Oh, my <laughs> goodness. You're a busy man. How old are yeah. you, Brandon? So, to we have um, twin 17-year-olds. Oh. Uh, they're both boys. Uh, one is trying to get into John Hopkins to be an anesthesiologist. The other, uh, Tyler, is in the Army National Guard. He's about to be going to Texas A&M okay. uh, to be a doctor. Uh, he's a combat medic, um, private first class. So <laughs> then I have a 15-year-old daughter, Caitlin. I have a 12-year-old daughter, Ashlyn. And then I have a 7-year-old son, Colton. And... Bryson, who is about to turn three years old, the 29th of this month. Oh, my goodness. And then uh, Braylon, who is six months. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> so we're all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm tired hearing all that, man. I'm kidding. That's incredible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, not not only do we we travel with the sports, you know, Ashlyn came out with me with the, the Bayou City Heat. and She was doing... Um, uh, play by play commentary on the live stream, but she wants to learn how to be a catcher. She also wants to learn how to be a spotter. So yeah, she's going to stay with mom with the Blackhawks next year and, and try yeah. and obtain some of those, those goals. But, you yeah. know, Pam is a, uh, my wife, Pam is a, a Girl Scout troop leader. She's also a Boy Scout, a Cub Scout den leader. Um, and I'm a, a Cub Scout cup master wow. or uh, Colton's uh, Pac 21 Cub Scout troop. <laughs> so yeah i mean we're we're busy we, yeah, you we stay are. busy oh, i was gonna goodness. ask what you do in your spare time but i don't think you, you have, don't any, have spare any spare time, time. <laughs> so actually yeah i saw that that and i kind of laughed i'm like oh that's a lot i do in my spare time but <laughs> um my me time what what centers me what grounds me back to earth um and i i try to do it before i go out to any tournament or or any uh world series is fishing that's oh, okay. that's that's how I disappear. That's how, you yeah. know, I get my Zen. It's, yeah. it's quiet. There's, you know, and I can do it with the kids. I can do it with friends and, and there's no competition. It's just yeah. relaxing. That's a good way to connect with your kids too. There's a lot to be said for those activities you do with your kids where you're not like facing each other and you're looking and focusing on another task and you can have some good conversations that way. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not one of those, uh, you know, bobber fisherman. I, I'm a sport fisher. I like uh, I like the different jigs and and lures. Okay. 
Yeah. So, That's so I go stuff. fishing. It's still working. You know, yeah. if if I if I put a bobber in the water and sit back in a chair, I'm going to end up taking a nap and <laughs> losing a <the> rod. <laughs> That's funny. One of our sons is a raft guide in Colorado and he has all that. He does all that. He okay. makes his own little lures great. and stuff like that. So I'm sure he would probably love to know about what you're into there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm making it interesting, uh, you know, as a blind fisherman, I'm, I'm teaching people tricks that, uh, you know, what a needle threader is. Yeah. All right. So uh, I told some of my friends, I'm like, look, you need to buy you a box of needle threaders. I'm like, what am I going to do with the needle threader? I said, you're going to utilize the needle threader. You're going to put your, your fishing line through the eyelet of the needle threader, and you're going to use it to go through your hook or your swivel or, or your lure or whatever, and then that way it helps you thread the line through it and tie it off. And they're like, that is so smart. <laughs> <laughs> that is smart. <laughs> okay, so you need to keep us – I know in this, earlier this month you were – you had told us about a chance to go down for us to try to play and we were obviously out of the country. So keep us, keep us posted when something's happened in the Texas area and we'll definitely try to make it. And we want to so experience fun. this. Yes. That would be so fun. Fun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Most, most definitely. Um, I know that we're trying, I'm part of a, uh, a group that's trying to organize a few Texas tournaments um we're gonna call it the the texas two-step it's a two weekend uh -huh. event um and it'll be all six texas teams battling for the the texas two-step uh trophy oh that sounds fun um and then i know the oklahoma team is trying to put on a, a tournament right there in uh in norman again yeah um in april so that they'll still be pretty close to you guys too Oh yeah yeah definitely Man, I totally want to see this played, and I totally want to try to play this. Absolutely. How do we prepare for that? I don't think you prepare. You just go and do you it. You just got to go do it, don't yeah. you? Okay, well, I think we should do it. And I think it's going to be really hard to start out with, because it's going to take away, we are so used to having our vision, Yes. that it's going to totally take away what we rely on. That's right. It's going to be incredibly difficult. And I kind of love that challenge. Yeah, I think we should do it. Yeah. All right, so make sure you check out where you can go watch this, where you can go try to play this, because the Hardys will be there. Yes. I'm going to put, uh, for the episode show notes, I'm going to put all the links for the beat ball yeah. website and facebook maybe page. some of the local teams and the facebook page yeah. so if you're interested in going or if you're even interested in playing yeah you can check it out that's right hardy party five and a half over and out we'll see you next time